So we were just talking to Tim about suppression motions uh, and, and specifically the, the role of, of suppressing evidence in a trial. Mm -hmm. From your angle, what does that mean for you? Like whenever Tim's going after evidence and trying to get it suppressed, what does that look like for you uh, in that process? So, I mean, to kind of frame it in a global sense, evidence, what comes in and what doesn't, that's kind of like the landscape of trial. The army uses a term or they used to use a term is prolific. It was called terrain denial, right? And so one of our, I think people think it's it's this when you hire a lawyer, that lawyer is like Tim and comes in and the magic happens. Um, sometimes that's the case. Sometimes, you know, you walk into a trial and you're kind of in an unfair fight and sometimes it's the opposite. And so a motion to suppress is a form of terrain denial where you take away large swaths of the government's evidence. A lot of people don't realize when they're, you know, when they're under investigation, they don't, they think that everything that's said, everything that's in their case file is what it will appear in court. There is a very big difference between a trial and say like an ad set board or an article 15 hearing or whatnot, where it's just kind of everything comes in at trial. The military judge strictly regulates what comes before the juror. So a good example in, in our last case was, um, or the last suppression was, you know, there was a five year delayed report. It was a sexual abuse case and you know, the alleged victim in the case, her statements were all over the place. So the government had virtually no toehold there. What they did have was a fairly, mm, it was it was a damning statement that our, our client had made. And so they were going to use that terrain. The evidence the government was going to use in that instance was going to be predominantly coming from our own client's mouth. When you eliminate that terrain, they don't have the ability to put that on at trial. And that is huge because then the tactics entirely shift. It's, it's like a chess game in that sense where suddenly the government now has to rely on its own witnesses and its own evidence that it's collected, which is sparse compared to what it did have. We've had other suppressions where the phone, you know, everybody lives their life on their phone. It is the devil's workshop, right? That is where people say things they don't mean. They post things that they probably wouldn't have if they were sober. It is a hodgepodge. But when we are able to eliminate a phone, I used to be the person who could make your phone disappear, right? That was sort of like the big calling card. And so when you can, we had a, a case where there was an assault case that was captured on a phone. And it was, you know, it's really, powerful piece of evidence the government had when it was taken away, suddenly they were just left to talk about it. And that's not as powerful as having a video. When you can eliminate the phone from evidence or when you can use the phone as evidence, which is also, you know, suppression and admission of evidence is a big piece of this. Again, it's not just about terrain denial. It's about what terrain you have to work on. And those are the things that Tim's allowed to talk about when he goes into a trial, right? That, those are the things that he can, you know, make a big deal about. And, and if that's, you know, if there's more there, it's a, more toeholds, more climbing around, more terrain. And in some cases, you extract that and you, or you take that away from the government and they have less of an argument. They may have rhetoric, but at the end of the day, they don't have facts. And so we... We use facts as our means to make cases. And so when you control the facts that are coming into court, you can control the outcome. If you're a military service member and you've already made a statement or you've given an admission or a confession that isn't true, or you've had a cell phone seized, or there's evidence that looks damning on its face that you think is going to be used against you at trial, let me tell you what, all hope is not lost. You still can fight this. You can still take this case to trial and it can still be won. Give me a call at 813-669-3500 or do additional research at my website, BeleckyLawGroup.com and get us into the fight.